our housing landscape is evolving. Firstly, we have fewer and fewer large tracts of undeveloped land left to build new towns and estates. Increasingly, we'll have to build new HDB flats within or near to existing estates, and these will often be more centrally located. Secondly, even what we call non-mature estates today have become much more developed. In future, many more BTO developments will be in estates or locations that are effectively mature. And that means the framework of mature and non-mature estates will no longer work and we need a new framework. This new framework has to achieve three important objectives. One, it has to keep home ownership affordable to all income groups. Two, it has to maintain a good social mix in every town and every region. And three, it has to keep the system fair for everyone. Our solution is to introduce a new plus model for selling HDB flats at choicer locations with stricter sale conditions so that we can moderate the prices. And everybody knows the BTO rules. For example, a five-year minimum, minimum occupation period, or MOP, after which the owner can resell the flat. And there's no income ceiling for resale buyers. These are standard rules and apply to what I will call standard projects. In future, most HDB projects will still be standard projects. But within each region, some HDB projects will be in choicer locations. But to make the scheme fair, HDB will also impose more restrictive restrictions, more restrictive sale conditions. For example, a longer MOP of 10 years to favour buyers who are planning to stay there for the longer term and discourage those who may be thinking of flipping the property and moving out as soon as they can. Tighter restrictions when the homeowner resells a plus flat later on, such as a subsidy recovery applied on the resale price. Certain percentage, when you sell the price, when you sell the flat, you pay back a certain percentage to HDB to take back the extra discounts you enjoyed up front since you are moving out. And this is to be fair to other buyers who didn't get these plus flats. Also, there will be an income ceiling on resale buyers, just like how we have an income ceiling on first-time buyers. And this will moderate the resale prices and help to maintain a better social mix, even in the resale market in the longer term. Actually, the PLUS model is not entirely new. We already have something similar called the Prime Location Public Housing Model. It's a lot of words, so let's just call them prime projects for short. So think of it like this. Standard flats are good flats built all over Singapore and will have HDB's standard subsidies and standard restrictions. Plus flats are in the choicer locations within a region and will have more subsidies and tighter restrictions than standard flats. Then prime flats are in the choicest and most central locations in the whole of Singapore. And they'll have the most subsidies and the tightest restrictions. HDB will roll out this framework for all new projects from the second half of next year. It will not affect existing projects. Your current homes or the homes you've already booked will not be reclassified. Today, first-timer singles can apply for new flats, but only two-room flexi flats and only in non-mature estates. They cannot buy new flexi flats in mature estates. Singles are also not allowed to buy prime flats. These rules are to prioritize our limited supply of flats, but unfortunately, they have restricted singles choices. And we will do something about this. When we roll out the new framework, singles will be allowed 
to buy two-room flexi flats across all types of BTO projects, standard, plus, and prime. HDB will tell you the details soon, but I'm sure singles will welcome this move to have more choices to find your own home. Financial concerns are top of mind, not just for younger workers, but also the older ones. These concerns become more urgent as we approach retirement, especially for those in their 50s and early 60s. Let us call them the young seniors. Young, because you are younger than the Pioneer Generation and the Merdeka Generation. Seniors, because you will soon retire, or maybe you have recently retired. We will introduce a package to help young seniors meet your retirement needs. Let's name it the Madula Package. This will be for Singaporeans who are 50 and above this year. Born in 1973 or earlier. It will benefit those with lower incomes and less wealth. The support will be tiered depending on your income and your CPF savings. The Majula package will comprise three components. First, an earn and save bonus to help you build up your CPF savings while you work. Most young seniors are still working and have some years to go before retirement. We encourage you to continue working as long as you can. Lower and middle income workers will get a CPF bonus of up to $1,000 a year depending on your income. And the government will credit this into your CPF account on top of the usual employer and employee contributions. You will receive this earn and save bonus yearly as long as you are working, whether full-time or part-time. Second, a retirement savings bonus. Third, a Medisave bonus. But besides young seniors, we also want to encourage older seniors to continue working for as long as you can. Hence, the Majula package also covers the Pioneer and Merdeka generations. Today, about one in five Singaporeans is a senior, age 65 and above. By 2030, nearly one in four Singaporeans will be a senior. First, we'll make your homes more senior friendly. Today, under the EASE program, this is the enhancement for active seniors, you can install fittings like ramps to help you get in and out of your homes. In toilets, you can install grab bars and make the floors slip resistant for safety. Soon, seniors can choose from an expanded suite of fittings under Ease 2.0. For example, you can have foldable shower seats. You can have your toilet entrances widen so that if you or your spouse needs a wheelchair, your wheelchair can be brought into the toilet. And life can be safer and much more convenient. Secondly, we'll make it safer and more comfortable for seniors to move about their neighborhoods. For example, we will revamp streets and linkways frequented by seniors. We will build more shelters and rest points, also more therapeutic gardens, fitness trails, and exercise machines to encourage seniors to stay active. The roads will be made more pedestrian friendly. For example, longer green man signals to give seniors more time to cross the road. So you see down here, 36 seconds, the motorcycles and cars have to wait. <laughs> Doesn't matter, old folks, safety is important. This is their home, their area, we put them first. Barrier-free ramps and raised zebra crossings 
so that wheelchair users can cross over without having a step to go down and a step to come back up again at the curb. 3D road markings and narrowed roads to slow the cars down. We will also install larger and more colourful block signs with familiar symbols to help seniors remember their own block and find their way home. Third, for those who need a little more help, we'll build more assisted living facilities. As you all know, my original plan was to hand over and step down as PM by 2022, before my 70th birthday. But the pandemic disrupted this plan. I promised Singaporeans that I would see the nation through the crisis together with both the current and the 4G leadership. Now, COVID is behind us and my succession plans are back on track. Recently, several controversial issues have drawn Singaporeans' attention. I've spoken about them in Parliament and in my National Day message. We dealt with each of them thoroughly and transparently. And let me assure you, these incidents will not delay my timetable for renewal. We are on track. More and more, my task is to support the 4G team and their agenda. I want to get them off to the best start possible. They are increasingly setting the pace. I have every confidence in Lawrence Wong and his team. We share the same core convictions that we are stewards of Singapore, entrusted with the immense responsibility to lead and care for this nation. That our time as stewards is transient, but we are building a Singapore for the ages. And that our best service to this nation is to hand over a better, stronger Singapore to those who follow us.